Tonight, I'm driving this GMC Sierra Denali Ultimate with Super Cruise and a 6.2 liter V8 back home to Nebraska. It's gonna be a long drive and I'm excited to have Super Cruise to see how it's gonna work on most of this trip. Hey, it's Tim, Pickup Truck Plus SUV Talk. So in this video, I'll give you some fuel economy on the 6.2 liter V8 and we'll talk about Super Cruise and getting back home. If you saw my video the other day, which maybe you do because you watch the channel quite a bit because yeah, that's kind of cool like that. Uh, you may have noted, remembered I took a Ram Hurricane down to the airport. I went to South Carolina. I did a GMC Acadia drive, and I'm driving back home. So what we're going to do is I'm going to go ahead and get this camera going over here. So I have, I'm just idling at the moment. It's not going to matter too much. Uh, I reset the tripodometer. I'm idling it for a few minutes as I get everything set up for this video. And again, when you have 180 miles to go, five minutes ain't going to matter. But we're going to go to Maps. I'll move this down so I don't choke myself. And then I'm going to search and I'm just going to put in uh, Gearing, Nebraska. It's kind of around where I live. So two hours and 52 minutes, you can see the way to go. Um, I'm not going to go that way because that's ridiculous. <laughs> I'm going to go this way. We'll click on that one. And that's going to take me up and around. Now, what's interesting is the GMC Acadia will actually show you how many Super Cruise miles that you have on the trip. And I was talking to the GMC team about this and we we're just trying to figure out if this truck had the right hardware and software to show you that. And it doesn't look like it did. Um, looks like this is not updated quite yet. So it doesn't show me how many miles will be Super Cruise, but I can tell you if I zoom out here, I was on uh, gmc.com and you can actually look at stuff on gmc.com and see that they're out. So let's, uh, let's spin, spin. So uh, yeah, so I can tell you that Basically, I get this turn right here, and this is all not Super Cruise to about right there, and I 80 north of Super Cruise. So, and if I go the other way through Cheyenne, this section here to there is not Super Cruise per the GMC um, uh, website. So, it hasn't been mapped yet, is what I'm trying to say. So, I'm going to drive most of the trip a Super Cruise, and it's about uh, 1 16 in the morning. <laughs> Why does. Uh, yeah, the setting's a little bit off on that. It's not 1.16 uh, in the morning. Uh, let me check my watch. It's 8.32 in the evening, or 1.16 in the afternoon, excuse me, that's the afternoon. Uh, so it's actually uh, 8, uh, 8.32. I just had a four hour flight and a three, not three hour drive home. So sorry if I come off a little bit not cohesive in this video. I'll do the best I can. I just figure I'm gonna update you when I get the Kimball. Uh, we'll get a number, maybe back, get it back home. And I'll do some updates on my phone though, when it gets dark. And I'm gonna see how it works in the dark because I'm, I'm, I've am I'm done it in the rain and it's worked well. I've done it in dark in Michigan, it worked pretty well. Be curious how this does. Um, yeah, interesting stuff. So let's go ahead and get the rest of this video. And I'll do a walk around, I'll kind of show you the interior. I'm not gonna spend a whole lot of time on that because it's got a long way to go. One of the things I'm gonna do before I head out, I'm still here at the gas station, um, is I wanna turn off, Super Cruise comes with new lane change. It only works when you're not towing. They can do Super Cruise when you're towing, which is really cool as well. But I don't like it. I, it just, it always wants to change lanes and get around and we go around like this, go around like that, and I just, it bugs me. So I wanna do turn signal activated. So that way, if I hit the stock a little bit on turn signal, and I have vehicle in front of me, it'll look for an opening and it'll change lanes. And I'll try to get that on camera. I just find that to me, it's just the way I drive. It's, I just like it better. The automatic is constantly trying to move over and on and over and on. And it just gets annoying after a while, in my opinion. I've never seen this before. This is Super Cruise. See the green bar? That means it's on. It gets green and blue. Blue means it's ready. Red means take control. It looks at your eyeballs right there. And those sensors, see the little lights right there? You can see them on your, I can see them on filming. Those are reading my face. So if I look away, look, it's like, oh, you're mad at me, mad at me, because I have the camera in front of the screen. So I can, I can kind of go back and forth, but I can't like look away. I can't read a newspaper or magazine, watch a movie. I got to keep my eyes forward while you're driving. So you can sit back and relax a little bit, but you still got to be engaged as you go. And see, it's mad at me again. Uh, yeah, so that's what Super Cruise is. Activated by the button here, you pay for OnStar and Wi-Fi, and it all works together. It's all a complete system. And so, yeah, that's what it does. All right, while I still have daylight here, I thought, let me do one more thing. Put my sandwich down, I'm eating my really awesomely not awesome gas station food. 
but if you just turn turn signal on and look for an opening, looks around, there's nobody there, it comes over and it completes and then done. That's that's auto lane change. So I, I can tap this or I can hold it down and it go moves over. Either way it works and there's my lane change. All right, this is a little unfortunate. So I'm on a road that GMC.com says should have Super Cruise and uh, not available. Not happening. Let me show you where I was at. So this is GMC.com, Connectivity Technology Super Cruise. And I looked at this before I left and I just wanted to verify that I saw the right thing. So I'm gonna come over here to Colorado, to Denver. And we I, I basically take up 76 here to Fort Morgan. And then it's this line right here. So this Highway 52 outside of Fort Morgan is this line right through there. So um, it doesn't work around the interstate when it gets off, but as, as you leave the interstate, there's a bridge here. And it should work all the way until I make this turn. There's a school here. I make a turn and I go basically over here and I go back north, 71, there it is. I basically go there in 71. So it should have worked right through here. That's where you're gonna see it on the camera on, when I go back to the truck. Um, look at the screen, you'll see it matches up. So I was really kind of, I was irritated, to say the least. Um, that's a little frustrating. Um, I swear I checked the map and it said north of Fort Morgan was fine. I'll, if I have the photo, I'll put it on the screen here and you can kind of double check with me, but uh, gosh darn it. <laughs> I do have auto high beams on, so there's your high beams and there's your not high beams and high beams and not high beams. Auto will detect vehicles coming towards you and turn your brights off, which is... Well, pretty handy when you're out in this part of the country because you need the high beams and then you forget about them. Then you blind people and that's not okay. Another thing I want to point out is the digital rear view mirror there. Um, what's nice about it and people, you know, turn on the regular mirror, you did a little flip there, you turn back and forth, is it actually dulls the light coming up behind you. So people's brights coming behind you aren't as glaring in the cabin. It's a nice feature. I talk about that, it seems like nobody else does, but really nice at night and we'll see if I work damn it work and I got the clock fixed too by the way uh, something in this vehicle settings if I recall it's the date time wasn't uh, auto set up for the time zone I don't know why that was turned off but it was so I turned it on and everything's hunky-dory now except for that here we are in the metropolis of Kimball, Nebraska. Metropolis. And here are 5,000 bugs I killed on the way into town. No super cruise all the way. 22 mile per gallon on the screen. Lots of bugs. Let's see if the super cruise gets turned on as I get out of the town on 71, as it should. Damn it. Aha. Uh -huh. We're back to cruising, Highway 71. I know this is mapped before, because uh, I've used Super Cruise on here before, so I was pretty sure it was gonna be work, work again. So now I can relax a little bit. Last uh, 37 minutes on the trip home, and then go right to bed, because I am getting exhausted. And I'll wrap this uh, video up tomorrow. Yeah, <laughs> I'm not so damn tired. All right, follow the channel all you know. I've talked about GM seats for a while. They uh, haven't been on my Love them list. I like the styling of them. I like the styling of Denali Ultimate seats. It looks pretty good. Denali Ultimate, by the way. Ultimate. But here's my criticism. It's going to be right here. This bolster, it just, it's hard. It just feels hard. It's not squishy. It doesn't feel really squishy. It just feels like it's hard leather. I don't like how it gets back in here. I wish it was a little bit bigger back in here. And the side bolsters, I mean, my goodness, I'm just squeezing as hard as I can to try to get that to move at all. And then this back here, I mean, I, it's like there's nothing. And then here, I can barely get down in there at all. And I've always just, I'm like, why has it got to be so freaking hard? Like, I understand you want these seats to last, but like, give me. But they got nice up here. But here, it's like, God, oh, it doesn't even move. Let's go somewhere else. Let's go to South Carolina. I drove the GMC Acadia over there, the 2024 model. I want to show you those seats and why I wish those seats were these seats and this truck seats. That made sense.
Let's talk about one more thing real fast about the seats. Where you put your butt. The most time you spend in your vehicle. And I want to talk about these because I've been fairly critical of GM seats of the last couple generations. But these are interesting. Lots of cushion here for the bolsters. Um, some of the, the Sierra I, I've been in and some of the Chevy Silverado seats, things like that, this is hard, but this has a lot of give. That's nice to see. And also back here, usually a lot of seats were really hard in a spot. This has a lot of give. So this is this is much better. And I like this, the stitching. I think it's gonna hold up the way the stitching in the end. So if you slide it out, you're gonna hold this up. Um, the back bolster, again, nice and thick, nice thick here. We've been driving for an hour or so. I don't feel fatigued. I feel like it's all nice pushing in. Much better seat. Maybe they finally listened to my criticism. Maybe not. I don't know. One of the things I didn't like and I still don't like is right here. See this plastic that comes up? So if you're, you're a person with a wide hip or a big butt or something and you turn, sometimes you'll get the back of your thigh on this. And this is a really hard angle here. We have an airbag built in the, right there, which causes that spot but i just wish this would come up a little bit more and cover so if you go over see how this folds over the plastic this does not that's kind of my issue Okay, so what do we have here? We have a really fancy truck, really fancy. How about $87,000 worth of fancy? Yeah, that's not a typo. Uh, the Super Cruise adds $2,200. Downpour metallic, that's the exterior color. That adds $495. Uh, so you're looking at total options is only $2,700 out of $87,000, $2,000 destination charge. And by the way, I did wash a shirt in between filming. So, you know, um, so, but what, what really what we have here is we have a luxury truck and a lot of people will get fired up in the comments. I can hear them coming in. They're going to be like, Oh, who's spending money on that truck? Well, you get a nice driving experience. Like I was pretty comfortable driving along the road. I, my butt wasn't comfortable because those freaking GMC Acadia seats rock. And so they need to be in here. Yeah, that's what needs to happen. But I mean, it's smooth. It's quiet. It's powerful. I'm going to take my family tomorrow to, uh, we have a doctor appointment, my kids with me down to Cheyenne about an hour, hour and a half away. No problem. I feel really confident behind the wheel. Uh, 6.2 liter is a smooth engine. A uh, big fan of that with the 10 speed. I, it just, it's just goes right down the road. Plenty of power for passing, for towing, everything. I've towed with this. Uh, it, it's a great engine. And I beat EPA. EPA says 16, 15, 19, and I got 22. 180 mile drive. That's pretty good. And now this is premium fuel only. A little bit concerned there, but I have talked to some customers on the forum. We have forum pick up talk.com. Plug for that. Go over there, subscribe, turn up that one. Um, and they're giving me feedback. They're saying they, they buy premium fuel. It's, it's, this is their purchase. This is what they put their money into. And this is their work truck, or this is their vehicle of choice. And if, if they requires it, they're going to do it. And it's a few bucks more here and there. So I don't know. It's, it's interesting. Uh, so why is this, I think the biggest question for a lot of people, and it's going to be fired up in the comments, is why does a truck like this exist? It's, it's highway robbery, and they're taking all this money, and it's, it's just going to be terrible for these consumers buying this. It's going to be upside down, whatever. <sighs> Look, there are consumers who have the means to purchase trucks like this. I saw one in town driving just about 20 minutes ago, and they want to buy trucks like this. They want to have the comfortable interior of like a luxury car and they want to have the utility of a bed it's a it's a perfect combo for that and i know for myself for my business i mean i'm always trying to find ways to spend a little more money on things because it's a tax benefit now i'm not a tax accountant i'm not epa i'm not doing that stuff I'm just telling you there is section 179 tax code go read it make your own decisions for yourself but it's a big deal why a lot of trucks are sold in the united states to small businesses section 179 Check it out. I'm not going to argue about that with anybody who's in the comments, by the way, FYI. But so it, for me, it was always like, I need to spend more money. And so if, if I'm going to look at this and say, man, I can, you know, I can do an LTZ, I can do an RST, I could do this, but I want these seats, or I want this, whatever. And then sometimes, as like I said, in years, well, sometimes in years past, pre-COVID, you can get bigger incentives on more luxury trucks than you can lower trim levels because there's more margin or more profit in luxury trucks. So you can get sometimes better deals. And so it's like, well, hey, if they're going to give you more cash off the hood to get a truck like this versus something that has less features, why wouldn't you? And I think we're going back to that. I'm seeing some incentives numbers coming up and brands are doing this. I mean, 
trucks are moving. It's, it's funny, you know, for years, it's always been the same saying. It doesn't matter what you do inside the truck, doesn't matter what you put on the hood, doesn't matter what you do, cash in the hood always sells. And we're gonna, starting to see incentives come back up, which that's a good deal. So I know my RHO I'm getting, I'm getting like 11 grand off of that. So uh, look at that video later on this fall, hopefully crossing fingers. Um, but yeah, I, I just think that I know why this truck exists. I know this customer, you know, my dad bought a Denali as soon as he retired from GM. He was there for 30 some years and he drove that home and he was really proud of it. I mean, I know a lot of guys doing this. It's not a volume seller. This is not going to move the volume. The volume is still going to be in fleet. I mean, half of uh, GMC, well, half of GM sales overall are going to be fleet sales. That's going to be your work truck trim. And then this will be probably 3%, 3 to 5% of overall take home rate of the entire GM. GMC sales for the entire year. So we're only going to talk probably 20, 30,000 to 30 trucks. But what's great about getting my experience behind the wheel is I can see the best that GMC offers, and then you can too, and you can say, well, I don't need that feature, Tim. I'm going to get this other I don't. I'm going to, you can, you can decontent your truck to a price point that makes, that fits your budget. You look at all the best things that you might get and say, you know what, I don't need that, don't need this, and you work your way down. And that's why it's nice to get, well, it's also nice for me to see what the best that GMC can offer too. And I've driven this a few different times and yeah, it's nice. <laughs> it's really nice. All right, there you go. There's my uh, thoughts on this. For more, check videos up over here. Website down below as well, pickuptrucktalk.com. As always, thanks for watching. I will see you down the road.